Let me show you one of the easiest ways to motion track an explosion into your scene, like this using After Effects. So we have our clip in our After Effects composition. We'll select it, open up our tracker tab, hit track motion and select position, rotation and scale. Then take our two tracker points and put them over two high contrasted areas on each side of our frame. And then we're going to hit analyze forward to track our motion data. Then we'll create a new null object in our composition, hit edit target, select that null object that we just made, hit apply and apply to X and Y dimensions so that we have all of our tracker tracking data on our null object. Now we're going to duplicate our footage, double click the duplicate and use our rotor brush tool to isolate the foreground like so and remove it from the background. So we'll hit freeze once our selection is made and that's going to isolate our foreground and background onto their own individual layers. Now take your explosion green screen asset, put it between those two layers and parent it to our null object with our motion tracking data. So it's motion tracked into our scene and finally search for the key light effect and apply that to your green screen footage to remove the green screen and have an effect that looks like this. In Premiere Pro, there's a couple ways that we can cut multiple clips on our timeline at once. So you do know that we can take the blade tool and cut them one by one like so, but that is time consuming. But if we hold shift and cut with the blade tool, we will cut our entire timeline at once. And alternatively, we can simply hit Command A and Command K or whatever your cut shortcut is to do the same thing. So a couple different options, choose what works best for you. So in Adobe After Effects, if we have a background video or video of any sorts, that's just not long enough for what we need. In this case, it's a quick little title sequence. Now, typically you can duplicate the layer a bunch of times and move it over manually like a caveman, but I'm not gonna have you doing that anymore. So go to your background layer, right click on it, go to reveal and select reveal layer source in project. That's gonna open it up in your project panel. We'll right click on that, go to interpret footage and hit main. And now down at the bottom of this menu, we're gonna see a little loop option here. I'm just going to change that to five. So you guessed it, it's gonna loop five times. So we'll hit okay. Now you'll notice with that background layer, we can now stretch it out as long as we want and play it back and it's going to continue to loop. So do with that info what you will. If you like today's tutorial, make sure to follow. I post literally every day. Let me show you how to automatically edit to the beat of a song in Premiere Pro. With your music track in your timeline and playing, we're gonna hit M on our keyboard to create markers where we want the edits to be in our sequence. Now we're gonna select our footage in order of how we want it to be used. Go up to clip and select automate to sequence. Now in this menu, we're gonna keep ordering at selection order, placement at unnumbered markers, method at overwrite edit, we'll select use in and out range and select ignore audio before hitting OK. Now Premiere will literally do the edit for you based on where your markers are. And if you want to use specific parts of your clips, simply set your in and out points prior to the previous steps. Let me show you the easiest way to animate pretty much any character in After Effects. So we have our PNG that we ripped off of Google. In our composition, we'll select the puppet tool and we're gonna add some joints or points around our character like so. Now, once we're done there, we can click and drag individual points to move them around freely. But what's really cool is if we hold Command on Mac or Control on PC, it's going to start live recording and we can move around creating our movements simply with the movement of our mouse. So once we're done, we'll let go of Control or command and unclick and when we play it back we have those exact movements in a matter of seconds so this is a really great way to animate if you're just getting started so do with that info what you will in Premiere Pro let me show you how to get perfect skin tones on your footage so we've got a clip here that I've color graded lightly now we can go up to window and we're gonna look for lumetri scopes and if we open that up, we'll see we get this spectrum graph here and it's got this thin line that represents where your perfect skin tone should be. And then it's got this additional white section that is where your actual skin tones are. So if we go over to Illumetri color and we go down to curves and we look for hue versus hue, we can change the hue of our footage and you'll see that our white section changes as we get farther away from our perfect skin tones. So rule of thumb, when you're trying to match your skin tones, just try and get the majority of that white section on the thin line there. So do with that info what you will. What if I told you that this building in the background isn't actually a building in the background at all? It's actually an AI generation that I created in Photoshop and then used After Effects to motion track into my scene. So if you wanna learn this technique and more, make sure to give me a follow. I post video editing breakdowns literally every day. In Premiere Pro, here's a trick that actually kind of blew my mind. So if we go up to effects, we search for ultra key. This is how I would usually remove a green screen. 
We'll drag that onto our green screen footage. Then we'll take our color picker here, head over to our footage, and you'll see that our green screen isn't completely evenly lit, which is normally the case. But if we hold command, you'll see our color picker icon gets a little bit bigger, which means when we click, we're gonna be taking a sample size of all the green in the surrounding area and not just the specific pixel green. So we're gonna get better results and hopefully a overall cleaner key by doing this. In After Effects, let me show you how you can add some simple but really dynamic animations to pretty much any image. So we'll add CC Bend It to this image of a palm tree that I ripped off Google. And now you'll see it gets cut off, but we're going to adjust our endpoint to the very top and our start point to the very bottom. So we have a point on either end. And now if we increase the bend property, we get this cool bend effect. And now we're gonna hit the stopwatch icon to create a keyframe. And then we are going to adjust the bend left and right over time so we get this really cool blowing in the wind palm tree effect and i like to imagine this palm tree just showed up to spring break and he's feeling wild he's feeling naughty and he's ready to party so he's moving around like a palm tree would in Premiere Pro, if you're like me, then you easily get frustrated by the timeline's default setting to wait till our cursor gets to the very edge and then it shifts over. Well, if we go up to Premiere Pro, settings, and then timeline, we can set timeline playback auto scrolling from page scroll to smooth scroll. And then when we hit okay and play it back, our cursor's gonna remain in the middle and our timeline's gonna move because that makes way more sense. So do with the info what you will. You won't believe this editing hack in Premiere Pro. So in Premiere Pro, if you have an inconsistent green screen like this one right here, let me show you an easy way to remove it. So we'll go to our mask options, create a mask around our subject like so, and then keyframe the mask path over time so that we are exposing as little green as possible. Now, once we're done, we'll have something that looks like this. Then we can go up to window, open up Lumetri colors and go to the HSL secondary tab, use our color picker to select green and then use the color picker with the plus icon to select all the additional shades of green. So we have a great selection. Now we can use these handles to further select just the green. Now make sure to spend a lot of time here and be really precise. And once we're happy with that selection, we'll go to this correction wheel and we'll push all of our greens to the same shade of green like so then decrease your contrast and sharpen and now when we go search for alter key apply it to our clip and then use the color picker to select our green to achieve an overall cleaner key than before. Let me tell you about Premiere Composer. It's a third party plugin with a free option for Premiere Pro that you can download and install today and access via your extensions like so. And when we open it up, we get this menu and it's got a starter pack folder. We'll open that up. We have a bunch of text box animations. We've got a bunch of text presets. We've got some sound design elements, shape elements, social media elements, and even some pre-built transitions like this zoom in transition that we can drag into our timeline, line up, and when we play it back, we've got an awesome pre-built zoom in, and there's a bunch more to choose from. Now, AI is not on its way. It is already here, and it's time for us editors to adapt or get left behind. Now, if you want to learn this effect and more, make sure to follow me. I post daily video editing tutorials.